Hi, Ernie. I made myself a couple of notes there last night. Okay, I good. thought maybe, what would it be if I give you this, what I got here first, and then whatever you got, you can ask me after. Okay, sounds great. Okay. Okay, uh, well, talking about the lake, uh, I got up there as early as 1955 to Halliburton. But uh, on Westlake, uh, I came in on uh, uh, 1966, and uh, I purchased uh, 2,000 acres from uh, Bert Curry. And Bert Curry is a, a local locker. He was well known. He had a cottage on Holliburton Lake, and he lived in town. And uh, he uh, he was also a council member in, in Dysart. And uh, in those days, of course, in 1966, there was no road to the lake. The only thing there was, there was a, a locking trail, and uh, we're done a bit of locking there, uh, going down the cottage road now. Uh, and when you got to the culvert, he had a little 30-inch culvert in there. And every time he went across, then he filled it up. And when he came back, he tore it out again. <laughs> and uh, so this went on for a number of years back and forth, even before I bought it. That that was his regular uh, on the uh, on the uh, 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 culvert where the, the water flows down into Moose Lake. And uh, <clears throat> so then... Uh, as I said, it was nothing but a trail. You couldn't even drive a car down there. So I had a gate on the Harbin Road uh, because uh, I just wanted to make sure that nothing happens down if somebody walks in or I didn't want to have no, uh, uh, no problems. Uh, the only people that had a, a, a key to the gate was uh, Halliburton Lodge, and they had a few people come in there from the States and done a bit of fishing, and they had some some boats down there, and these some wooden boats, and later on, these wooden boats, they all sunk into the lake. Down. Most of these these boats are uh, back there by lot number 30 uh, in the lake. And... Uh, uh, let me see, what else do I know here? So uh, what was Halliburton Lodge? It was like a fishing lodge? Halliburton Lodge was on the north end of of uh, of, uh, of, 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 of Track Lake. Oh. Yeah. And uh, people that owned it at the time, uh, they, uh, they laid around, sold it to that count, you know? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Killian. Domain of Killian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's what it is. It, it was later called Domain Killian. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, let me see where else I can So, here. So they, would ha they had boats on Halliburton Lake, so they were just taking people no, no, fishing they had, or something? They, 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 of course, they'd done some fishing, these, these American people, and... Uh, of course, they had to have a boat in order to get out onto the lake, right? Right. So they, they brought in some, some wooden boats. And uh, that was already before I purchased that. They had, that those wooden boats were there. Curry had, he got a little bit of money from uh, the Halliburton Lodge for letting these uh, people come in and do some fishing, you know? Right. And, and they left their boats there all year round. And then, of course, later on when I purchased it and... And they were there a couple of more times, but then uh, it, it didn't didn't quite work out anymore. So uh, uh, these boats were just in, uh, well, I don't know, they were put under water or they fell in the water. But uh, I I noticed that they were all they were all down in down on the bottom of the lake, somewhere down there by lot number thirty. Wow. And yeah, yeah, and then. Uh, 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 Bert had a, 
before I bought it, he had a little Peterborough, Peterborough car put on lot number three. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and of course there was no hydro or nothing, and uh, and then um, we brought in a, a propane fridge and a propane uh, 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 stove and uh, a propane bottle, and uh, and I... I was up there quite often, and, and especially on, on the weekends and during the week sometimes. I cut down a lot of these uh, uh, dead trees that were along the side. On the other side of lot number 30, if you if you go along the water there, you will see there, there, there's all kinds of stumps underneath the water. And I cleared all that. I cleared all some way down there where the water comes in from, uh, from Deer Lake. Uh, and a few of the, the ones that are there now, these are the ones I left, <clears throat> just so that everybody knows uh, where these uh, cut-off ones were, that they, didn't, that they don't get hit by them or so. And, uh, uh, yeah, so we had a, we, 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 we had a, I had a gate on there, so I wanted to make sure that nobody comes in and, 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 uh, and I get charged with anything or any, and, and so on. Uh, and and the area there where all these trees are on the Harbin Road now and along the, uh, the, 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 the township road, yeah. uh, that was 150 acres. That was all in grass. Oh. Yeah, there were no trees there. None, of, none whatsoever, or 150 acres. As, as you come in on the uh, township road, yeah. everything on the left-hand side, these trees... Uh, they were all reseeded by me, and the forestry gave us the seedlings, and uh, and that's what you got there now. These trees, they came all out of seedlings. But before we put before we uh, we, we we put the, the, the seedlings in there, there was 150 acres, just all grass, and uh, and and of course uh, birds birds uh, 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 that. They were homesteading there, and Bird was born uh, right on where you come in on the Harbin Road, uh, uh, onto the township road. There, just uh, maybe about uh, maybe maybe a hundred yards in off the road, after after the the, the the West Lake Road, there is still the old footings there from 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 the house that uh, Bird's dad. And their family were were homesteading there, and of course they needed they needed that grass there because they they, they had a few chickens and uh, you know and, and we made a living out of that you know wow and, yeah and, and 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 I guess they had a cow or something to get a bit of milk because going into Halliburton in those days uh, it took you all day you know so. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that 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 as I said, it was all grass. That was there was absolutely no trees there. It will it's all been reseeded there. And uh, uh, okay, let me see. So when you bought the land, you bought two thousand acres. It was all of West Lake, which was then Pollywog Lake, wasn't it? Yeah, all of Poly. It was called in those days. Was called Pollywog. Yeah, and it was all of all of West Lake. Yes. Yeah. And and it was. All of all of what they call Horse Lake, which yes. is a little little lake when you come in, you know, uh, where the um, where the people go in by by the Israel Israel uh, camp camp. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Everything on the right hand side as you go in that road, right into the camp, that was all part of my property. And what about and, Bashant Lake too? And Bashant Lake, I had four hundred acres there. And uh, and and about uh, oh, a mile and a half of shoreline. Wow. Yeah, and um, and that, that was later then uh, developed into uh, oh, I think I think it was about uh, oh, well, there was a big controversy uh, uh, because people that bought it off of me, they wanted to develop it all. Uh, but then they found out that the cottages weren't in, in, in were, were not uh, too happy about the whole thing, and then it went to the uh, 
uh, it went to, 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 to the courts, and then uh, uh, it, it got settled, I think, with about the whole area, which is the opposite side of where where that uh, Israel camp is, you know? Okay. Yeah, all of that land on the opposite side of the lake, uh, that was all part of my property at one time, but I think they got about eight or nine cottages out of it. Wow. Out of the whole, out of the whole uh, area uh, de- uh, developed. But they had in mind to put a lot more in there, but uh, it, 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 and as I say, it went through the courts and uh, uh, OMB and uh, everybody else was involved and the surveyors from Halliburton were involved. Um, they done studies on it, but they, 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 it didn't come through. It just it never materialized to more than about seven or eight cottages, and of course they're there now. And uh, okay, that's 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 Deer Lake. And when you come in from the from the, from the the road on uh, where the, where the Israel camp is, everything as you come in to to work on the on the on the Harbour Road towards where you go into West Lake, everything on the left hand side as you come along the, the Harbour Road uh, from uh, from uh, uh, where you go into the Israel camp right down to where you come in on the West Lake Road, everything on the left hand side that was all part of my property. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. a massive piece of land. Yeah. Well, 2,000 acres is a lot of land. Sure is. Everything, everything you're telling me now that they're lake, that they're, that they're logging there, and that was all part of my land there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because one time I sold 300, acre, 300 acres uh, to uh, 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 fill up in uh, a park and up in that area, and, and I guess they are the ones that log at 300 acres now. So... Uh, let me mm. see what else. What else do I have? Here? So, when did you get the plan of subdivision for for West Lake? Was that sixty six? You mean that the development? Yeah. No, the development came uh, from sixty six. I had it just lying there, not doing anything, until about uh, nineteen. Uh, about 1973-74. Well, you had a really good deal worked out with um, with Bert Curry, didn't you, for the the payment? Like well, he, he, yeah. yeah, he yeah, didn't I really want that. I had, a, yeah, I had a good deal worked out at the time. That was because that was that was because of that Bert. Uh, Bert came along and and he said uh, in those days the interest was around six percent. You know. Mm-hmm. And I was willing to pay uh, uh, the, because I had a mortgage on it, right? And uh, I was willing to pay the 6%. But then, no, uh, Bert said, you pay the price. I, 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 was, I was cutting the price down. But uh, Bert said, you pay the price and you don't have to pay no interest. And the reason why he said that was because um, the... Uh, um, um, they, in those days, there were no no capital gain yet, right? And uh, and of course, if he if he would have taken back a mortgage, then he would have had to report that, and 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 he he did he didn't want, he didn't wanted to report uh, the interest from the mortgage, so uh, and the capital gain wasn't there yet, but we knew it was coming. So, uh, so uh, 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 I paid the price that he asked for, for the simple reason because it worked out cheaper for me than having him take a mortgage and I pay 6% interest. In the long run, it would have been uh, much better for me to do it that way. So then what the price paid him uh, he didn't have to pay no capital gain because there was capital gain. He put that money more or less in his pocket. Yeah, you know. So that 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 that, that was that was that's the way.
way it was in those days. And, uh, uh, yeah, let me see what else I got here. So you uh, got the plan of subdivision went through in the 70s. And um, I think Sylvia was telling me that you guys used to go on canoe trips where you would go right down to Moose Lake. Yes, we've done that. Uh, we've done canoe trips. We went uh, from Deer Lake and we came down to Portage into West Lake. And then from West Lake, we, <coughs> we portaged across uh, uh, down into Moose Lake. And then from Moose Lake to Eagle Lake. And at Eagle Lake, where the public uh, stand beaches, that's that's where we came out. So we brought the cars around. One guy brought the cars around, and then we, we picked up the canoes, and we, 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 we went back. But we started out on Deer Lake. Oh, isn't oh, yeah. that neat? <laughs> and, and also, also, in those days, there was a big boys' camp from, ha- from Hamilton, uh, a Christian boys' camp before the Jewish people uh, bought the camp. There was uh, a Christian boys' camp uh, on uh, Deer Lake, and um, and they had a lot of um, uh, counselors to look after these kids because they took in every two weeks. They took in about three big. Uh, 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 bus loads of kids that they brought up from uh, Hamilton. Uh, some people could could pay for to uh, get these, bring these kids up here for two weeks, and the others didn't have the money. So uh, uh, I know the church or some or some some other. Uh, Charity uh, paid for the for these kids, and every two weeks they they changed three busloads. They could they could take in as much as um, eighty five to ninety kids in in that uh, in that uh, uh, in yeah it was the y, it was also part of the YMCA yeah. <laughs> and um, they could they could in, they could house as many as. As that, and they had a lot of counselors there, and these counselors with canoes, they also took the the the, the portage from uh, from uh, Deer Lake down into West Lake, and from West Lake down into Moose Lake, and onto Eagle Lake. And uh, I could see sometimes they had about oh fifteen, sixteen uh, canoes coming across the lake. Wow! With, loaded loaded with kids. Yeah, and they came, and they, they 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 got on land right where the culverts are, you know. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah, and then they crossed the road, and of course in those days there wasn't much road yet, and then they crossed the road, uh, and then they went down into into Moose Lake, you know, and uh, uh, and on to Eagle Lake, and uh, well, they they had their arrangements made, but I saw I saw them. Quite often, uh, when they all came across the lake with fifteen, sixteen canoes, it was quite a quite a sight to see. You know, I imagine it would be. That's that's a really nice image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, let me see what else was there. Okay, uh, so you you got the plan of subdivision, and then you decided uh, to wait some more, even though you already had a plan of subdivision. Well, no. You see, what I've had was this: my original plan. And I still have it here. I can drop it off one day. The original plan was 57 lots, and they were approved. And uh, and of course that wasn't much of a problem in those days because uh, Bert was on council, <laughs> and, and he owned the land, and he he had uh, Bishop the land surveyor survey out 57 lots. On the north side, where all the where the thirty cottages are now, they were in those days fifty seven lots, and then <clears throat> and they were approved by the by the ministry in Toronto, Ministry of Housing had an approved for fifty seven lots, and all I would have had to do was just uh, go go ahead with the plan. But because <clears throat> I was building cottages in the past down on Stormy Lake and in a few other places. 
uh, I always knew that a hundred foot lot was very difficult to bring in a driveway and um, and uh, uh, make room for for septic pits and the septic tank and and clear out for the cottage on a hundred foot lot, especially when you had some elevated land and so. So what I decided was, uh, for the good of all, I went and I cut the plan in half. I doubled up all the lots. From the 57 lots, I doubled up and I came out with 30 lots. That is the reason why we have 30 lots on the lake or else if I have went through with it, we would have had 5,700 foot lots. Wow. Now we got now we got mainly 200 foot lots, and in those those days, if I have went through with it and wouldn't have cut it in half, then we would have had 57 100 foot lots. And then I had to pay another ten thousand dollars at the time for Bishop to resurvey it, resurvey it back from. 57 down to 30 because uh, because I knew I was building cottages there and it was much it would have been too difficult always to I mean there's a lot of cottages built on 100 foot lots and they have set tanks and, and they have driveways in there but uh, but it, I, I, I didn't want it that, that I, I didn't want it that, that way well then coming back to the road um, uh, it was not about I think it was 1976 uh, when I then finally uh, had the, uh, uh, the plan approved by the Ministry of Housing in Toronto, cut down to 30 lots. And of course, they had no problem with that because by that time, uh, uh, you know, uh, the environment already had changed a lot from the 60s, you know. Yeah. So so uh, uh, I had no problem doing that. And, 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 but I wouldn't have had to do it. But but then I went and I I, uh, I put in culverts um, because that uh, little thirty inch culvert there was often flooded out, and and, and, and uh, uh, in the spring, of course, it always threw it out again. That very same uh, culvert is still there today. I t- I took it out uh, and uh, and I brought it into. Lot number uh, six, uh, no, no, lot number, uh, uh, let me see, the first, that little cottage, the first cottage past the cul- past the, the culvert where the, where the water goes out. If you continue on the road, you get up to uh, uh, lot 19 or right. lot, eight, lot 18. That little dirty inch culvert is still in the driveway of lot number 18. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's still in there today. And, um, and then I put in two, uh, uh, two culverts, uh, two 48 inch culverts, because I, I was going to continue on, on uh, bringing the road up to township standards. And uh, so I put in two uh, 48 inch culverts. And uh, by Tony's place, uh, Th- those were the ones that are by Tony's place. No, 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 the, no. By by uh, by uh, by lot number twenty. Oh, you okay. Know, yep. Lot number twenty, where the water goes down into Moose Lake, right? Okay. Yeah. So I put, I I took that little dirty inch culvert out, and I put two forty-eight inch culverts right beside each other, right? Yep. Okay, all right, and then we, we, we well, of course, we had machinery there, machinery there by that time, uh, and dozer and so, and then we filled that all in, and and, um, and and of course, all by that time, all of the road from the gate, where I had the gate up on the Harbour Road, all the way down right to the end, I stripped the road 100 feet wide. On wow. both, bo- bo- you know that the road has to be sixty-six foot, right? Right. But I cut the I cut the bush back to a hundred feet all the way from Harbin Road right to the end of the road at the turnaround. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I tell you what, uh, Brenda, 
in my lifetime, I wore out a lot of chainsaws. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. Even in the time I've known you, Ernie, you've done more chainsawing than anybody else I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, me and another guy, we were working there for weeks, and we we cut all the stuff out uh, from one end to the other, made the road wide enough before we put before we put uh, 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 the road in. Uh, and, and ditches for 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 uh, uh, getting that approved for township standards. And uh, <clears throat> when we put in these two two culverts, uh, they weren't in very long. Uh, and we had a hag of a storm coming up, and it rained for about three days, and it just poured and it poured and it poured, and the lake got filled up with water. And the water was flushing through these culverts down into the Moose Lake Road, and it took the whole Moose Lake Road out. Oh my goodness! And that was on a weekend. Uh -oh. And all the all the cottages that were in the in in the in the Moose in the uh, in, on Moose Lake, they couldn't get out. They had to go. They had to go home on on a on a on a, on a, on a Sunday night, and the road was totally torn out. They couldn't go out. The cottage. The, the township worked for 48 hours, day and night. Wow. St straight through, trying to get these trying to get these people back to work because because they had to get out and they couldn't get out. So that, and, and, the, and the road was totally flooded out. And, and, and it took them uh, two or three days. And after they got the people out, they were still working there uh, a couple of more days trying to finish up that that Moose Lake Road, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I remember that as well. And uh, let me see what else do I Did the know? road ever flood by Tony's place? Because a couple of years ago, in 2016, I was up there during the spring, and it was a very rainy season, and I saw the water come within inches of going right over the road. <laughs> it's yeah, like I a little causeway that, yeah. there. I, rem I remember that. But that was because the beavers blocked the culvert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We put a 30-inch culvert in there. Yeah. Okay? Where the road, where the water came across, yeah. there, there was a 30-inch culvert in there. But then the beavers, uh, from the other side of the road, you know, where that low land is, there's a little bit of water there, a little bit of lake there, right? Yeah. And the beavers, of course, that that was their home, right? And they, they went and they blocked it. They blocked that uh, culvert just as fast as we could uh, 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 open it again. They went and they blocked it again. <laughs> you know? And then, of course, when you go to sawing the water coming across that, that it was because the, the, the culvert was blocked again. Well, then later on, of course, when the road was approved, and it was now a pro it was my problem anymore more than that was the township's problem, and and they had they had to do a lot of uh, changes and a lot of fixing up to keep these uh, uh, keep these beavers away, you know. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, let me see what else was there. Uh, okay, so the the Halliburton. Yeah, they, resort they, they, they stopped using the lake you you divided the lake into lots and then it was sort of like one cottage you built a year or one every other year for for quite a while wasn't it that's right yeah we built one or two a year sometimes only one a year you know and yeah that, that went on for, for quite a while the first cottage that was built was about i think 1960 uh, 1976 or 77 and that was uh, uh, Bill Calderwood's cottage. Oh. Yeah, Bill Calderwood was the first cottage on the lake. Wow. Uh, you know, the first uh, uh, built cottage on the lake. Well, other than the, the one from from uh, Peterborough College, the, the, the little one we had on lot number 30. And what happened there on lot number 30? Uh, after we put the, the propane uh, uh, equipment in, the, in there, uh, I had a, a good friend of ours with uh, his family come up on the weekend. I gave them a key to the gate, and uh, they came in there, and they stayed in there for the weekend. And they had uh, the fridge going and, uh, and the stove, and, and they went to bed. And, uh, and one night they woke up, and they had terrible headaches, terrible headaches. And uh, the, 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 the young, uh, well, the boy was 
a teenager. He came out and he uh, woke up his uh, his mom and dad, and uh, he said he's got such a bad headache, bad headache. And then they woke up, and then they they had the smell too, and we we had propane leak in the fridge. Oh. And and if that kid wouldn't have gotten up, the, the whole family could have died in there. Wow. Yeah. So uh, so of course they had to they had to leave the cottage in the middle of the night and uh, and, and go home, you know. And uh, and then of course we, uh, we, we 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 fixed it up, and we uh, like somebody come in there and they, and they fixed it up, and then uh, and then we still used it for a while, but. There was always a little bit of a worried about, uh, you know, propane and, and maybe leak and so on. And then the next thing we know, one weekend, these people drove up there again, and they came in on the driveway, and they figured, well, gee, what's, what's this here? We must have been on the wrong, we must be in on the wrong driveway. There is no cottage there. And then they looked, you know, they're in the right place, all right. But the whole cottage burned down. Oh, my goodness. So that whole Peterborough cottage on lot number thirty had burned down, and um, and and it was because there was a a, a real bad uh, lightning storm, and lightning hit that cottage, and, uh, and 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 just burned it down. And of course, because it was such a storm, and such a rainy storm, uh, it didn't burn beyond the bush. It only burned the whole cottage down, right down to the footings, and, and because the, the, the floor and everything was so wet, uh, it didn't burn beyond the footings. Wow. But the cottage That's was That's amazing. Gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't, a big, <laughs> it wasn't a big loss. We had a little bit of insurance on there, but, but very, very, nowhere near what we, what we, what we should have put on at the time, but it didn't, yeah. it didn't really matter. So, uh, let me see if I got anything else here. Now, did you actually, I, I know that you and Tony were involved at one point in um, bear hunting and moose hunting and deer hunting. Yeah, did you yeah, ever? Yeah, no, I've done, no, I've done a lot of bear hunting there and deer <laughs> hunting. Not moose hunting, but deer. We've done, for many, many years, we hunted deer, especially at the time when we bought, when I bought the land and, uh, and and we had a gate on there, and uh, every fall we were deer hunting there because there was no development yet. There was no road yet, right? Right. Uh, or, or a very little road. Uh, so between the 66 and the first cottage, uh, or when the road started, when when we started to build the road in there in the in the, in the uh, oh in the middle 70s or early 70s, and and Bill Calderwood. Cottage was about 70, 76 or 77. That was the first cottage. Yeah, so we done moose, not we done deer hunting there mainly. And then later on, what I did is uh, I brought in a lot of uh, 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 hunters from Germany, and uh, and and, and uh, I had uh, several several places on. Uh, on the 2,000 acres that I had uh, baited for, for, for bear hunting. And uh, I brought in these German to, uh, hunters and they bear hunted there. And uh, and of course, so I also uh, leased land from the, from the Ministry of Forestry in Minden uh, for bear hunting down on Stormy Lake and in different areas. So, so uh, I've I've had a lot of uh, 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 baiting to do. Uh, it took me uh, I, I, I done about eighty kilometers. Uh, I left in the morning and finished in the early afternoon, uh, and I drove about eighty kilometers to about fifteen, sixteen, or seventeen baiting places. Wow! Yeah. And uh, and of course we all had high seats there, so the the the, the, uh, the, the hunters were all placed in the were, were were because that's the only way you could hunt bear. You couldn't you can you can you can hunt deer by by walking through the bush, but you can't hunt bear by walking through the bush because uh, you would never see one. You 
had to you had to have the bear come to you. You couldn't come to the bear. So uh, uh, yeah, I done a lot of bear hunting there. And then of course, when we started to put the road in, uh, we had to do a lot of blasting, uh, a lot of rock blasting. Especially there, when you come in just before you get to lot 30 on the right hand side, you see that big rock up there. Yeah. We, had to, we had to cut right across there. We had to, uh, that, that rock cut came right across the road. We had to blast all that, that rock cut out of there. And, uh, uh, yeah, and when we cut all the trees down, of course, there was a lot of firewood to be burned. And uh, and there was a lot of logs to be uh, uh, taken away for firewood, and uh, and I had uh, Charlie Hurt from Eagle Lake. When you go to through Eagle Lake, you see on the left hand side he has a lot of bulldozers and stuff standing there. Yeah, yeah, that's Charlie Hurt, and Charlie Hurt uh, he he, uh, he 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 done all a lot of brush burning and and uh, he also. Uh, uh, took out all the, the firewood, and of course he sold the firewood. So uh, yeah, that was that. And uh, uh, yeah, we worked out a lot of chains there. Yeah. Yep. So and, the, uh, the original people on the lake would have been um, Pipes. Were they one of the originals? Who? Gord and Janet Pipe. Yes. Yes, they were the number two. They were number two. And then they who were, else was there yeah. at the time? Yeah, they were number two. Yeah, they. They, uh, they had the cottage on lot number 30, yeah, that's right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then, you know, we, 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 we started to build uh, uh, 29 and 28, you know, one after the other, yeah. So, so the, the besters? The guy does a, the guy, the guy does a lot of fishing, his dad bought, <laughs> bought a finished cottage off of me at the time, you know? Yeah, he did. Eric is still there. Um, uh-huh. And he fishes every day that he's there. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah. I guess he's from the original. And what about Tony on on that back lot there? Tony was one of the originals, wasn't he? You mean Tony Bandel, the one that uh, passed away? Yes. Well, no, Tony, what, what, what happened to Tony was, <clears throat> see, when I, uh, when I surveyed uh, the, uh, the land uh, and I cut it down to 30 lots, uh, <clears throat> there were also... There were also three blocks uh, on the other side of the road. Now, one block was uh, where John Watson, of course, he's not alive anymore. That's the first one on the right-hand side up on the hill. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, 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 the people that bought this place, they keep it real nice. You oh, know? don't they? they? It looks beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, they, they, look at, they, they, they really look after it. That was, that was the first block. And then when you come down to, uh, you know, where the big uh, house is, uh, uh, where Paul and uh, Nancy lives in? Yeah. That was the second block. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> and then where Tony's cottage is in, that was, we surveyed that out uh, because uh, it, it, it Tony's land there and all that 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 that, that low lying swamp there that all that seventeen acres that that belongs to, to Tony you know oh okay yeah that belonged to the cottage and and and, and that low low lying area about seventeen acres well that was a natural that was a natural uh, 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 block so uh, that, that 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 didn't have to be. That didn't really have to be any resurveying done because it it bordered on on one side it bordered on to the to the concession road uh-huh. just like it does up uh, where uh, the last cottage is you know right yeah uh, the last cottage was also a block yeah that was and block that, A that's where the juriuses are yeah and, yeah juriuses yeah and at the time when I when I uh, um, when I uh, uh, developed these blocks into uh, a lot to to build a cottage on, uh, they, the, the municipality asked the cottagers first if they have anything against it, because uh, normally blocks in a subdivision agreement are 
uh, always made so that if the cottages decide that they want to make a, a court out of it or a, or a, or a baseball uh, 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 area or anything like that, the cottages would have a say in it, but then, but then, of course, the cottages never wanted to put in a, a baseball area or, a, or, a, or anything like that. So, but but they, it had to come up from the municipality to the cottages of they, whether they have anything against it. But the people on the on the, on the lake decided that they have nothing against it. So then they were these blocks were developed into into a, a cottage lot, and then. Anything beyond uh, Block A, that is the concession road between Harbor and and, uh, and Gil- Guilford. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that 66 feet between Harbor and Guilford belongs to the municipality, and they 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 wouldn't allow to put anything through there. You know. Right. No, yeah. So this is why these people who bought this land, they were actually gonna these very same people, they were gonna buy one of my lots. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, because the the, uh, the, uh, the 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 real estate had actually showed them one of my lots, and they were gonna buy that lot, and then all of a sudden they found out that this thing came up for sale in the back. Yeah. And then they figured, oh well, we might as well gonna buy that because that. That, that offers a lot more land than than a cottage, you know, yeah. than, than a co- than a cottage lot does, right? Because they had a lot of lake shore there, but all of that lake shore that they own is on the other side of the swamp. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and the only way they ever going to get to it is with a canoe. Uh, they only have they, they, you know, because th- for them to build a road there through that swamp over to where they would have uh, uh, a good place to put a cottage that would cost them more in today's prices for bulldozers and whatever to build roads and, and material. It would cost them more than, than than would it be worse to put a cottage on there. Yes, I can imagine. You know, so, they, 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 so like you said, they do have a problem, you know? Yep, they certainly but do. <laughs> they should have checked into that first, you know? So, uh, uh, yeah, and then, and then of course, uh, the whole thing came, came into, I had the road then uh, all finished and approved by the engineer uh, for the roads department that came out of Huntsville. Oh. The, 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 the people, the engineers that were responsible to take um, uh, you know take to, to, to take note of the road uh, whether it can be approved uh, so that the township would take it over uh, it had to be approved by the engineer out of Huntsville so when the engineer from Huntsville came uh, he he went through the road and by that time I had it all finished and it was the road the whole rate road from one end to the other right around the end of the road and the, uh, the turn around, uh, all the culverts that were placed, all the ditches that were uh, done on both sides of the road, uh, the whole land clearing, of course, was not a, not a problem at all because I, I, I didn't clear it out to 66 feet, I cleared it out to 100 feet. So, in, of course, today a lot of it had, back, had, had grown back in, you know, but originally it was 100 feet wide. Wow. And, uh, and the engineer had it all approved for um, uh, for, uh, for, for uh, what did they call it again? Sub subdivision. Uh, yeah, yeah, for subdivision. Yeah, and, and and the only thing that had to be done yet was to place the gravel. Oh, I and, see. Yeah, it needed it needed six inch of crushed stone on on the. Uh, on the uh, uh, on the road, that was the only thing that wasn't done, but everything was sub approved. So uh, uh, then, of course, it created a problem because I found out that some of the uh, uh, developers, uh, local developers in Halliburton, they were do 
doing their own thing. They were doing things that a serious legal like me couldn't get away with. <laughs> so, 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 but then I, I, I wasn't stupid either. I went to the, to the, to the, to the, the registry office and I, I looked into their subdivision agreements to see if their subdivision agreements were differing from mine. Because I know what my subdivision agreement to the municipality was worth. And, and I wanted to know what theirs is, theirs are worth because they were getting away with things that, that I would have not, I would have not gotten away with, uh, because I wasn't a local. So then I said, I went to the, to, I went to the, to the, to the township and I said, look, something is, something isn't right here because, uh, they have the same agreements that I have. They are not doing what I have to do. Well, to the, the, the township of I, you know, in those days when I first bought this land, you know how many people were in the township? No. Three people. <laughs> in the township office, there was a clerk, and then there was one guy that done all, that, 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 he was the, uh, he was the road superintendent. Yep. And then there was a, a, a tax collector. <laughs> so, so three people. You know, you know what's in there today. I, and I'm, how many? And how many departments are in there today? I can't even imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. Thirty wouldn't be enough. Thirty <laughs> people in that office wouldn't would not be uh, uh, without a, without a, without a choke would 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 not but would be more than that. And the departments and departments and departments. Now, just get on the phone and phone the ministry, the phone the dice and find out what they tell you. Uh, if you want this or if you want that or if you want... In those days, you just phoned up and there was one guy there and that was all. <laughs> but, but, okay, that, 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 that doesn't really matter. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah, and then what happened was uh, I said, no, no, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this a, a little bit more test, tested. So I went, and I went, and I went to a law office in Toronto, and I asked um, for them to check into my subdivision agreement. So, yeah, they said they can do that. It was a big firm in Toronto, and believe me, it was costly. But I figured it was worthwhile, uh, uh, because I, I didn't like what these local people were doing and I couldn't get away. So, uh, so then they, they checked it out, this, 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 this company, and it was costly, but they came back and they said to me, you know what you got here? That agreement that you have with a, with a, minist with a, with a ministry of Dysart doesn't mean a thing. Oh my. You don't know you don't even have to build a, a, a township road. I already had it sub-approved. I already had it finished through the engineer when I found out that I never had to build a, sub -road, a subdivision road in the first place. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay, so then, then I said, so now what am I going to do? I haven't got the gravel on there. So I went to the, to the township and I told him, I said, look, That gravel is never going to be put on by Mr. Gruber. <laughs> you can put it on yourself, or you can put it on through whoever you want to put it through on, but I won't be putting it on because your agreement to me doesn't mean a thing. Oh, well, then, the next thing I know, I read in the Halliburton, uh, in the in the Asho, in the Asho paper, they had a, a, a big ad in there, Oh, the subdivider for West Lake, he found a loophole <laughs> to get out of the out of the uh, subdivision, uh, out of the uh, uh, road, to bringing the road up to township standards. He found a loophole, and he's not finishing the road. That that was in the uh, in, in 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 the in the, in the actual paper, okay, and uh, uh, and and then. We left it like that, then it would have only, then it, as far as I'm concerned, it would have only be a private road, and every cottage would have had to contribute a certain amount of money to uh, bring the road up to maintenance, 
uh, 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 for a private road. That's the way it was left. Yeah. And yeah. And then, and then, uh, shortly after that, what was the the, the, the government, uh, the liberal government that came in, Gretchen? Yeah. Yeah, Gretchen put a big uh, uh, spoke. If the liberals are going to be voted in, then six hundred million dollars the liberal government will spend for uh, uh, for for what do they call it for improvements for for yeah infrastructure infrastructure exactly yes they will spend six hundred million dollars for infrastructure okay so one day. Uh, the big chief from uh, Dysart, uh, uh, what's his name? He's still on there. He's still uh, he, Murray. He, he, huh? Murray Ferry? Murray Ferry, yeah. Murray came out to me and he said, uh, Ernie, he said, you know what? Your road is engineer approved. All that needs is the gravel. I said, you don't have to tell me that. I told you that before. And then he said, you know what? You can... Uh, the money for the road, for that gravel, can be made available through infrastructure. Wow. Because, you're, because your road is up to standards. So uh, if you want if you want to go and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, sign the papers, uh, there's only limited time. It has to be uh, uh, put into the government within 30 days and uh, and, uh, and 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 then the road can be finished uh, through infrastructure. Yeah, so we signed the papers, and uh, uh, what they wanted to know was, uh, and 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 the way that the way it was 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 worded the infrastructure was, uh, um, when you finish the road, whatever it cost. Uh, one third is going to be paid by the federal government. The other third is paid by the provincial government. And the third part is paid by the municipality. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So the, first, the government paid the third. The provincial government paid the other third. But the, the township had no money. Oh, no. <laughs> no, they don't ever have any money. So... Uh, Mary said to me, he said, well, you have, you have to pay uh, uh, the part for the township because the township hasn't got the money, but you're going to land up with a township road. So I went to the, at, at that time, there were limited cottages. Uh, Bill was there and a few other cottages, or maybe about five or six cottages were built by that, by that time. So I went to these cottages and I asked them and they all approved of it. They said, yes, we're going to pay. We, we, we got, uh, whatever that, whatever we had to come up with, I don't remember exactly how much money it was. It wasn't the world, but whatever we had to come up with, uh, everybody had to chip in a certain amount from the cottages and I had to chip in the rest of it. Uh, of all the lots that I still owned vacant, okay? Uh -huh. So so every vacant lot was uh, more or less uh, 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 also had to pay a part of it so that we could more, more or less make up what the town didn't pay for. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and then the road, the road got graveled and approved to township standards and uh, and then from there on, I didn't look after it anymore. It actually got paved for a while, and then with the building, the big trucks chewed up the pavement, and the pet town wouldn't pave it anymore. So it's gone back yes. to gravel now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. At one time, they came they, uh, after the township road was approved, and they thought, uh, I guess, uh, uh, the people that, that, that put the pavement in there, they said, well, in the long run, it's going to save the township money, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and it was a good road there for a long time, but then, uh, of course, in some places it wasn't so good in Minnesota, so they decided to tear it out and, and, uh, Yeah, it got back. washed out in some places, like down by the culvert by lot 19, and yeah. then coming up to our place onto Retirement Road, um, 
it when the big big trucks would turn around in the that cul-de-sac they would they just chewed up the road so they they didn't repave it they just graveled it out yeah they graveled it out yeah yeah well that was basically it but uh, as i said to the uh to the good thing of it uh, and for the environmental part of it uh, uh, i think uh, uh, for the good of all of us, uh, it, it wasn't a bad idea that we didn't uh, have quest take with 57 lots uh, and uh, we only built 30 cottages on there. I think that was a great idea. We have one of the nicest lakes in all of Halliburton, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Now, what about uh, McDowell's on the other side? That was also your piece of property, wasn't it? That 50-acre peninsula? Who's well, yeah, there? all of all of this land on the other side, the, the, the McDowell's uh, place. Yes, all the all the way out, all the way out to Harbin Road. Yeah, that was all yours. Was all mine, and all and if you if you went the other way, the other side of the road, and you went all the way out to the road where the boys' camp comes in. Yeah, it was all my road. There. It was all my property there. Wow. And there's a little, if you come halfway in uh, from where the sign is for the Jewish uh, uh, people are coming in. Again, when you, from there, if you come halfway in on the road, there's a little lake on the right-hand side, and that's called Horse Lake. Yep, I've been there. Uh, yeah, and Horse Lake, all of Horse Lake and all of this land that was a part of the property. Wow. Now, oh, yeah, on the lake, we have a public boat launch, and then we have another couple of parcels that are... A public access like the one that's across from the Watson's old property is a public access and yeah. what about the land in front of Tony's cottage the land in front of Tony's cottage yeah the lakefront is that part of a public land or is that land belonging to the property that Tony owns no Tony does not own that he just put a he, he just went and put himself a sort of a, a dock out there, right? Yeah. So he yeah. doesn't own that. That's that's no, not. No, no. All of that land is owned not by Tony. It's owned by the by by by. Uh, but the water, the water is never owned by anybody. The water is owned uh, uh, by 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 uh, by the ground. Right. The, the ground owns the water. Right. So his right. property only goes to the edge of the road. It doesn't go on the other side you know, of the road. From, you, you know from lot number four? Yes. Lot number four? Yes. Okay. All of, uh, were, you, were you going on, on, on your road? Uh-huh. Well, from there, all the way down to lot number three. Okay. Lot, num lot number three is, is uh, uh, well, you know where lot number three is. Yes. Uh, all of this land here... All of that land is not owned by Tony. No, none of it is owned by Tony. That's he he he, he just put a dock on uh, out there, and uh, and and the minute and and dies out more or less. He's uh, not saying anything to it. They they wouldn't give him anything in, on paper because they they wouldn't want to be responsible for it or be sued by anybody. Right. The same the same as. They put, uh, when Watson owned a cottage up there, he put a, a little dock out down by the lake. Well, that that that's a little that where they go in, where they go in, uh, you know, next to a Bill's cottage. Yep. Uh, uh, right up to uh, uh, the Brennan's cottage. That that is owned by the municipality, by the, by the by, by the township, because I dedicated that when I when I. When I took out a subdivision plan, I had to give a certain amount of land or cash money to the municipality for 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 getting a subdivision approved. Okay. That's part. That's part of a subdivision agreement that you have to give five percent of the land. Uh, 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 developed, you have to give to the municipality either in cash or 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 or, or in land. Well, I gave them that lot, and 
and and and, and the municipality owns it. And and when Watson put a dock out there, well, it, it's just more or less uh, tolerated by the municipality, but they would not give any, any anybody uh, uh, anything on paper because they would, didn't want they didn't want no no problem with it. The same with lot number thirty. From lot number thirty, right over to that uh, cottage, that, the one that comes you know, on that long re- on that long road. Yeah. You know that that guy never talked to anybody. No, <laughs> but you know what? They um uh, they've actually bought that from the town. I know that the pipes and the Dossies well, split that well, property. Yes. Yeah, there, there was there was some land in between, and uh, and uh, uh, these people in lot number thirty, they bought that from the township. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there was another piece, I think, between McDowell's and the Dossies too, that was also sold yes, from the municipality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So those pieces can be bought, I suppose. It's just whether the municipality wants to sell them or not would be the big story. Well, I guess uh, they don't need the money right now. But if they ever, if they ever needed the money, they could they could sell that land and, and probably uh, uh, have it uh, uh, rezoned for a cottage lot. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Huh? Yeah. Who knows? No. Uh, who knows? Yeah. But, well, but, but Ernie, they do, own, they do own it, yeah. Yep, you've had a lot of fun over the years at yeah. West Lake. You've been going to West Lake when it was Pollywog Lake, and then from Pollywog Lake it turned into West Lake. It used to be the West Lake Road, now it's the West Settlement Road, which kind of makes us sound like we're some sort of subculture by the bayou or something, but you know. Um, yeah. It's what a fantastic legacy. We're, we miss well, you at the lake, well, are you? Know, you know, you also have to remember, uh, Brenda, I, I, I spent 52 years up there, you know? Wow. 52 years. And we miss you at the lake. We really do. I don't hear that chainsaw uh, uh, of yours. Been, you know, I've been, <laughs> been working and cottaging for 52 years in Halliburton. Wow. So, so uh, when you asked me yesterday, you must be missing the cottage. Well, yes and no. And the no is because... I done it fifty two years. Yeah, you know, you've been there for a while. <laughs> yeah, I've been there for a while, and uh, and when I look back to it, uh, uh, yes, I enjoyed every minute of it. I I I, I love my work, you know. Yeah, and you had quite a few interesting happenstances in, in the time that you've been working up there. Um, yeah. You have weathered the most incredible storms. You've seen blizzards. That oh, have yeah. been just crazy. You fell through the ice one year. Yeah, I've done that lots of times. Yeah. Oh, lots of times. Yeah, I fell through the ice, yeah. I fell through the ice with a snowmobile and, uh, oh, and uh, other places. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you got hit by a tree. A tree I fell crawled, and... I crawled, I crawled out on, 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 on the ice on all four of my... my uh, I lied on the body and with, with, with two hands and... Two legs. I I crawl it out on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the floating floating ice to get me onto land. You know. Oh after, my! After I uh, after I broke in with a with a with a snowmobile. Yeah. Wow! You are so well, lucky to still be here. One time, well, I guess you saw me out on on lot number twenty out on the lake, and then when you came by and you said, Ernie, what the hell are you doing out there? Yes. And then you fell through. <laughs> <laughs> and the tree dropped on you. I remember the second year we had our cottage, you broke your sh- your collarbone because somebody was, yeah. you were cutting trees and one of the trees twisted and fell and oh, yeah. landed yeah, they on took, you. They took me into a burden by stretcher, yeah? Wow. You're yeah, lucky to be alive. <laughs> the ambulance brought me, the ambulance picked me up. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, what happened there was we were clearing, we were clearing lot number seven, huh? Yep. Yeah, in the fall, and uh, <clears throat> I had a man working with me, cutting down some of the trees, and uh, and I was down burning the brush, you know. Yes. And, uh, and 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 kept the fire going, and then I said to the guy, I said, "Look, there's one more tree up there." You see that little birch tree on the right hand? Uh, 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 it wasn't a birch, it was a, uh, a pine tree. I says, uh, you see that pine tree up there? I says, cut that down and then we're going to go for lunch. And I'm feeding the fire. 
and um, and I'm facing my back towards him because I'm looking at the fire. And he takes the chainsaw and he cuts down that tree. And the tree was probably, I would say, uh, it had a, the trunk had a diameter maybe of about, uh, oh, maybe 10 inches. It wasn't a real big tree. Well, that's a big enough tree. <laughs> yeah, but it was enough tree. But what happened was it was up on the hill and I was almost halfway down on the lot. When he cut that tree down, that tree came down and I heard down that hill. Wow. And there was a branch sticking out, maybe a three inches thick. And that three inches thick branch hit me in the back and pinned me to the ground. Wow. The trunk was only about, I would say, less than a foot away from me. Wow. If the trunk would have hit me, I wouldn't have been there anymore. No. But, but because that branch hit me and pinned me to the ground, it just took the daylights out of me. Because as it came down the, the hill, it really picked up speed, you know? And then after I was pinned down to the ground, a guy called Timber. <laughs> a little late. <laughs> a little late, yeah. Well, I couldn't get up. And, you know, the cottage was already built on uh, on on lot number... Well, next to you, what was his name? Um, Chuck and Sandy's place. Right, Sandy's place. You know, and uh, and you know what? Uh, the people that was it Sand? No, or was it the people? That one must have been the people before. Yeah, there was yeah, the people, it was the people before. before them. Yeah, it was the people before them. Yeah, uh, in those days there there were no cell phones yet, you know. Yeah. So uh, they they had, uh, uh, but they had, they had, they had a phone in. And they they called the uh, just ha- lucky that they were there and they called the ambulance. Wow! You know? And then the ambulance picked me up and took me in and they took an X ray and well they saw I had some broken shoulder bones and and uh, yeah oh yeah that's all part of it uh, but uh, uh, now have you ever had there. have you ever had a close encounter with a bear around West Lake? Oh my God! Don't. Don't, don't, don't mention that. Yeah, I've had that too. And uh, uh, I, uh, I was bathing there, and uh, the next thing I know, there is this big black bear. He's standing maybe about oh, six, six, seven feet away from me. <laughs> and I, I got the bait in my hand. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. And uh, that bait is that, that 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 bear is looking at me, and I'm looking at the bear. <laughs> And uh, and I guess he must have had breakfast this morning because he all of a sudden turned sideways and he just slowly walked away from me. Oh. Now, I, I wasn't going to walk away. I, I, I just stood there and I kept looking at him. And, uh, and had I run away, he probably would have run after me. Who knows? So, uh, no, no, I just, yeah, yeah I've, I've had that too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you could have thrown him the bait and then maybe he would have been happy with that instead of wanting to eat you. <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, well, I'm still alive. I'm still uh, pushing 86 now, huh? Yeah, isn't that something? Well, congratulations. You've had one heck of a good time up in Halliburton and in our yeah. little area there at Westlake, and we appreciate everything you did to develop that area because we all benefit from it because of the yeah, work I'm that sure. you did. I'm sure, yeah. And, uh, and one thing I wanted to ask you, you said this guy put a cottage in on lot number 16. Uh, where did he put the cottage? He must have put it close to uh, 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 the, the Brenda's cottage. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, you'd have to see it. It's a re- it's a really interesting way that they did it. It's kind of on a little bit of an angle to the lake, looking more south east than due east. And it seems to be right up on top of the rock. It, it's a really pretty spot, but the way that they've done it, it's really quite yeah, pretty. That's what, yeah, that's what I figured. It must be right on top of the rock. Yep. Because uh, <clears throat> where the end of the rock is, uh, it's a sheer, sheer down. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, uh, uh, well, I guess, I guess he hasn't got any small kids for them to fall down there. No. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, 
So that's where he put it, right on that on that uh, rock plateau, right? Yes. It's but it's really pretty. You'll have to come up and see it sometime. Yeah. So it must be it must be it must be close to Ashley's cottage, uh, to 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 her lot line, right? I don't think so. It doesn't. Oh. It doesn't seem to be, but you know, hers is further up the hill, and theirs is closer to the lake. And theirs is closer to the lake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Okay. Well, well, it's been good talking to you. It's and, nice uh, talking to you too, Ernie. And if you're ever up in West Lake, you yeah. know, feel free to come by, and you've got a place yeah. to stay at our place if you ever want to stay at the lake. Yeah, and give my regards to all of them. Okay. I absolutely will. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. all of your history with us. I'm I'm not guaranteeing that I won't call you back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have a good have a good uh, uh, get together. I guess you have on the weekend. You have uh, a barbecue. All right. We do, and everybody should be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that would be interesting to find out a little bit history of the lake. Huh? I think it would be great. One last question before you go. Yeah. The Sunken Island, we call it the Sunken Island, was that spot in the middle of the lake where there's all those rocks and all the lily pads, was that ever a real island? Which one? Can, can in the mean, middle uh, of the lake, right across from Chuck and Sandy's and sort of just to the right of where, left where I am. You know there's a big shallow spot with all kinds of weeds and lily pads in the middle of the lake? Out, uh, out on the lake? Yeah. Yeah, what about it? Was it ever an island? Yes, it was an island. It absolutely was an island. It was, it, that's something that you, I for, almost forgot to mention. Yes, it had, it had a, 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 a big tree right in the middle of the water. <laughs> now watch. And uh, on top of that tree was a big osprey nest. Oh, wow. And that osprey was the lake's domain. <laughs> that, that osprey, because it was so quiet there, right? Yes. There was nobody on the lake, right? It was so quiet. That osprey had a field day. It was his domain. There was a big tree, and right on top of that tree was a big osprey nest. Isn't that something? Yeah, yes, yes. And I guess he was the king of the lake at one time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I had to cut it down later. Aw. Yeah, well... It got course, flooded anyway, started, didn't it? When we started to do work there and bring the road in and all that, then the osprey was gone. Right, and the water level rose anyway, so there wouldn't have been a, it wouldn't have been an island anyway. No, it wouldn't have been an island, no. But it, it, it wouldn't it would never have been an island because well of course you see what happened was when 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 Bert owned the land and uh, he done a bit of laughing so what he did is with his backhoe he had to go across where the river went out to Moose Lake right yeah so so when he wanted to go across he just pushed it in right. Okay. So that he could get his machinery across, right? When he went out, he opened it all up again. And he done that every so often, every so often. So the change of the, the lake was, there was such a change of the lake because the water was kept in and the water was taken out. And, and, and at, at, at sometimes it flushed the whole thing out to the point where where it, it brought the lake level so low. Right. I guess that's know? when it was Pollywog Lake. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, it, it, it was a constant back and forth uh, uh, in those days uh, uh, with the water gr uh, coming out of, out of West Lake and uh, going down into Moose Lake, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that It's much better now. When we, had, when we had the big culverts put in, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, okay, so you know a lot of history. Uh, good thing I didn't forget about that uh, osprey nest because that was, uh, and if you, if you go there and we drive by there with a the canoe and you look around a little bit, you, you, you should be able to still see where, that, where the stump is. Yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's really quite something. Yeah, the stump is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Amy. You. Thank you so yeah. much. I really appreciate no. you taking the time. Okay. No problem. Okay. Okay. We'll thank talk to you thank soon. You. All right. Bye-bye. Say hi to Sylvia and Mila for me. Yes, I will. Yeah. Okay. You. Bye-bye.